dancing and prancing, grooving, keep on moving, flying, stop your crying, choosing while you're cruising. Music is the answer to your problems. Keep on moving, then you can solve them. If you feel that you can't take no more. And your feet are headed for the door Gotta keep on dancing And prancing Grooving Keep on moving Flying Stop your crying Choosing While you're cruising Music is the answer To your problems Keep on moving Then you can solve them At 12 midnight I'll be waiting for you Forget what you have to do Gotta keep on dancing And prancing Grooving Keep on moving Flying Stop the crying Choosing While you're cruising Music is the answer To your problems Keep on moving Then you can solve them If you feel that you can't take no more on dancing and prancing, grooving, keep on moving, flying, stop the crying, choosing while you're cruising, music is the answer to your problems, keep on moving, then you can solve them, at 12 midnight I'll be waiting for you, so don't forget what you have to do. Alrighty, fourth session of the day with the old strength. Hopefully that focuses. I have snatch high pulls plus snatch. So four high three, four high pulls, last one snatch. Then I have tall jerks and overhead squats. Tricky one for me. Will I get there? Everyone keeps calling to the gym today. I've been warming up outside now, I'm cold again, trying to get warm again. Alright, let's get this done. day gone have I even spoke to you today anyway <laughs> welcome to today's video it is 7 p.m. I'm going to the supermarket we're singing the outfit <laughs> inspired by John Lally not wearing the docks though I should have the docks on I haven't I've got the zigs now a couple of things to do gotta go supermarket it is a super moon tonight, so the sun sets at 8.05, the moon comes up at 8.45, so it's gonna be dark, dark, dark. Clouds are, you can see the clouds there. It's not playing ball. I scouted a location last night. <clears throat> I'm hoping it works. I gotta go there in the pitch dark and go down some stairs and over a cliff. But sure, that's what I normally do. <laughs> so I'm going to do a time lapse <coughs> of the super moon. I just have to figure out what lens to use. I haven't figured that out yet, I don't need. Like, you need to zoom the lens in on the moon, otherwise it just looks like a fucking dot in the sky, do you know what I mean? So, gonna go pick up a lens and go from there. Now, if you don't know what these are, these are driving gloves for you peasants out there. Italian leather. It's all about the look, you know. Just you can drive a car, or you can drive a car. And that's it. Size eight and a half. Italian leather. 
rip the wheel better right let's do this so quick scramble i don't think this is going to work tonight because there's some clouds have rolled in it's been cloudy for the last few days so couple of couple of issues sun's already set so you're not going to get that blood red of the moon because it's too dark when the sun just sets and the moon comes up at the same time that's what you're looking for because there's great reflection of the of the of the um, the amount of light still in the sky even though the sun is just set whereas now it's already gone down three quarters of an hour so i think you'll just have a big white ball if it pops through the cloud that's the problem so i'm going to give it a go i'm going to go to the I'm gonna to go to the, the 200 steps, the uh, Camilla Beach, and go down the steps a little bit, and should have the the rocks that are in the water there as the foreground, and give it a go. So I have 10 minutes to get set up, and then do a little time lapse. If it works, it works. I we'll give it a go. That's life, isn't it? So the steps where everyone runs up. It's pitch, well, it's not pitch dark, but it's a lot of brightness down here. A little bit of light left. I had to jump over the barrier to get down. Anyway, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have um, one tripod here. In the background, you're going to see the that is Alvor, and some rocks over here. And hopefully, the moon is going to pop up. So I'm just going to get set up. Right, I've got about 50 minutes to kill. So I thought I'll do my first ever night vision shout out. <laughs> Johnny Jitsu shout out. The first time I met Johnny Jitsu, he'd arrived. And the first time I became, I kind of knew him from the scene, but the first time I became like aware of him, he did a, I think it was Cage Contender or something like that. He didn't get paid, and nobody got paid. I think your man Ferguson was running the show, and he made a video because he used to do this Johnny Jitsu here. It was always a bit of a joke, and then one time he went on all serious, and I said, Oh, you haven't got paid. I sold all these tickets, and that fucker's gone off of me money, and I just thought, the power of video to be able to get on a platform and say your word I thought it was great and then the first time I met him I was kind of still I was like an MMA it was just me doing videos and him doing his little Johnny Jitsu thing and I don't think there was anybody else really doing much and he came on holiday to the Algarve and he gave me a shout he said look I'm down in Albuquerque come down and pick me up come up, to the, I'll come up to the gym with you and he was one of these guys that I'd never met him before like for me but he got in the car and then he, you know, there was no introduction. It was just like, all right, let's do a video. You know, it was already, we we're already mates. And we buzzed off each other. It was great crack. And he came over for a couple of training camps and we did some great skit videos. We did the human punch bag and we did the uh, oose. What well, oose meant, it, it meant like hoosing your dog when you're a kid, you know? Jitsu, yeah. What did yourself oh, there, John? How are you doing, Ninja? What's the story? Oh, not too bad, me old pal. Good to see you. Oh yeah, man. Good to be back in Lagoosh or Lagosh or whatever way you pronounce it. I've had a few questions, John, right? Yes, by the way, sir. A couple of people have been saying to me that you and John Redmond the, are the same person. Ah, that's a load of bollocks. Load of bollocks, man. You know John Redmond? Yeah, very mild-mannered kind of guy. Yeah. Chilled out. Yeah. Very articulate. He is very articulate, isn't he? Yeah, very articulate guy. Yeah. And that's not you then, isn't no, it? No, that's certainly not me. I'm a fucking scumbag. <laughs> Listen, the other thing is uh, that ooze that you say all the time. What's that, what's that mean? Well, basically, ooze came from when I was a kid. We had a little dog called Tyson. And when anyone used to mess with me on the road, I used to say ooze. But being a part of the martial arts game, the whole world developed from ooze into ooze. And that's how we... Got to this so it's from Dublin then, isn't it? Yeah, it's from Dublin. It's not Japanese at all. Yeah, it's more of a fucking kill lock thing. It north is side north thing. side, north side. I'm not Oosh. Oosh. the fuck, yeah, fuck. But he's a, uh, he's he's a mad cunt, but he's a he's a good lad. He's a good solid lad. He'll always be there for you. So Johnny Jitsu, keep on rocking, son. Keep on rocking. In the meantime, the moon is peering through some um, clouds here, and I think it's gonna look kind of special. I wasn't. Didn't have much truck in it at the start. There's a big deep layer of cloud had kind of like it's a high layer of cloud, but the the moon, because it's so strong, because it's so big, it's peering through. So I'm getting some light on the camera. So the time lapse might actually look actually alright. Might actually save it at the end of the day. Anyway, the other thing about the full moon is you need to get into the sea and energize yourself with the water. Obviously naked. So I'm gonna do that too because. You know, I'm trying to get back to nature. 
there's a lot of things actually he was on he was on the Paddy Hulahan show Kiefer Crosby and he was saying like he realised now all the stuff doesn't mean jack shit you can't wear your clothes out you can't drive your fancy car you're just stuck in the gaff with what means stuff to you which is your family or yourself so back to basics I'm going to get into the ocean and wash myself with the lunar energy that is the super meal bad boy on silence. <laughs> Don't interrupt the vlog. Great day today. Super moon, super day. There's something about moons. I'm starting to change the way I look at calendars. Because we know we the calendar we work off, you know that. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. January, February, March. Do you know what that calendar is called? It's called the Julian calendar after Julius Caesar of the Romans, 491 AD. So what the fuck's that got to do with me? <laughs> so I've decided when I don't have to work off that calendar that everybody else has to work off, I'm gonna work off a different calendar, a lunar calendar. Like for instance, today the moon came up at quarter to nine. The day before that, it was an hour and 15 minutes earlier. Tomorrow, it's an hour and 15 minutes later. The sun came up, sat, the sun set at 8.09. Tomorrow will be 8.10. It's one minute every day on the sun. But at the moment in this, in this season that we're in, it's an hour 15 every day with the moon. It comes up quicker or later. <laughs> Confuses me. The ensemble today, I am wearing a Fred Perry cardigan. T-shirt is a Hanes, pack of three, New York, or 17 bucks or something like that in any of the Walmarts. This cap. Now when I started wearing hats first, I would have always wore a flat cap. And this is the flat cap amongst flat caps. It's a Kangol classic. I have it about 15, 18 years. It's been everywhere. It's been to Thailand. It's been, I always wear it when I travel. I was on the Mayweather tour. It's just a classic. It just frames your face well. I know what a flat cap's gonna look like before I even put it on. A lot of times I look at it, I won't even put it on because I know it's not gonna fit. It's gotta frame your face. That's what it does. I'm on the wine tonight. In a cup. Don't judge me. It was 79 cents for a litre in a carton, so it doesn't deserve a fancy glass. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs because a lot of people have been in touch with me. I've, I've decided now I'm going to upload to YouTube and then upload onto IGTV, that's Instagram to television. It's just I'm getting a lot more traction off that. So all the backlog I'm just going to do daily until I catch up with where we're at. Because we're doing every second day thereabouts. Shout out Christian O'Brien. Send me a message on Instagram. Can I get a shout out? He's a little boogie boarder from from England. Shout out, buddy. <laughs> Hope you're catching a few waves. Dano O'Toole, he's been here a few times, Dano. Good kid, good little scrapper. Gotta make a few decisions to go any further. 
but he's getting there, getting back in. Good lad. Liam from New York. Liam looks after us in New York for security. When we go to New York, Liam's there with his crew and they look after us like impeccably. Last time we were in some rough neighborhoods like Brooklyn and Staines and all that. And the boys always look after us well. So shout out to Liam. Said I got him to do a bit of a workout. Shout out to Jerry Vegas, Brother Rabbit. Brother Bourne, Jerry Bourne, Jerry Vegas. Jerry's a bit of a character. You always hear him laughing. Very little quiet with Jerry. Always laughing. Always making a noise. Always making a racket. Always making a buzz. He's a buzzer, it's Jerry. Made a nice little film of his 30th birthday party. Good lad. And his brother. His brother found Jesus. Which is great. It's a positive, you know? People think it's funny, I think. But it's not. It's serious. It's a good positive. You gave me a blessing the last time and I appreciate it. Who else did I got? Shout out to That was it. There was something I wanted to talk about and what was lessons. Lessons I've learned in life. And that got me thinking about there was a podcast I had it downloaded by a guy called Randy Pouch. P-A-U-S-H. Look it up. And it was called the last ever lecture. So if you were to give your last ever lecture, what would it be about? Turns out it was his last ever lecture because he was dying of pancreatic cancer. And he was a lecturer. And he spoke about his boyhood dreams and lessons learned. I won't spoil it on you. Look it up. It's, it's a guy who's, who knows he's going to die in a couple of months, but yet is in great shape. And he's not looking for sympathy, he's just talking about how things turned out for him when he had dreams and stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a really uplifting piece of audio. Uh, I, I did, I've watched it on video, but I used to have it on, 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 on audio on a podcast and I thought it was great. And then it got me thinking about what were my boyhood dreams. I didn't, I didn't have many boyhood dreams and I, I think I fulfilled them all. <laughs> One of my first one was I wanted to be a painter like my father, which I did at like 14, left school at 14, got an apprenticeship, got that. The other one was I wanted to be able to drive any car, just get into a car and drive it, any car, you know. I think that was down to watching people, I think it was John Sheen actually, I'd seen John Sheen get into a car and then get into a different car and a different car and just get in no water, you know. And I've achieved that. And the other one was, uh, it was uh, kind of made me laugh was, with a chip, chipper across the road from us. <laughs> and I wanted to be able to just go over and buy a bag of chips and some cod any day I wanted. And I think I've achieved all those goals. <laughs> they were my boyhood dreams. <laughs> and the, the other thing was I wanted to talk about lessons learned. And they were, I suppose one of the biggest lessons I ever learned was you never know who the fuck you're talking to. It might just be God might just be Jesus and don't be underestimating people and a funny thing happens to me I get this message one day I get a lot of messages during the summer people coming on holidays and they're, they're looking for someone to train and they, they type in Lagos Jiu Jitsu MMA whatever and my gym is the only one that has a fucking website and pops up and I just get these emails and messages. Most of them I don't answer, especially if you start off with can I borrow a gear or how much is a class or any of that shit. Like I'm not interested. If you if you don't just tell me what you want and you want to come training, great. But if you wanna ask me a bunch of questions, you won't get an answer back. For some reason, I get this Facebook message of a guy called Chu Wong Man. Right? So this thing pops up on Messenger. Hey, I mean Lagos in the summer with the family and um, I trained Jiu Jitsu could I come and train in your school and I was like of course but he didn't have a profile picture he had this like painting of like it would look like some Chinese landscape so that was that then I got another message off him to say hey I'm staying in this place um, can you can you have a look at it for me and tell me what you think? 
<laughs> now I'm not a tourist guide, you know what I mean? I, mean, I haven't met you, so why the fuck would I be giving you advice on where you're staying? But for some reason I clicked on it and it turned out to be Toby Wan's place, the famous DJ from Lagos. And I wrote back and I said, yeah, yeah, actually a mate of mine owns that gaff um, on the Airbnb. It's a lovely spot, it's close to the gym, blah, blah, blah. Is this your real name? Thinking like, you know, it just has this, you know the way some people have these like fake names. And he goes, yeah, that's my real name. I'm half Chinese. It's like, all right. <laughs> so that was all I thought of it. I didn't think anything else of it. And one day, this dude walks into the gym a few months later. And he looked like Kane walking the earth. And you people that are around long enough will know a TV series called Kung Fu with David Carradine. Is it Carradine? Carradine? Yeah. Hung himself with a belt, wanking himself to death. <laughs> Didn't mean to hang himself. <laughs> but it was a TV series and it still holds up. If you ever get across Kung Fu, the TV series, it was about this kind of Chinese guy. He wasn't Chinese, he was American. But at the time, they didn't really want Chinese people in it. And he used to go from, in the kind of the cowboy area, he used to go from town to town. And he grew up in a, a Buddhist monk, monastery. And he'd come across some shit and he'd deal with it with his kung fu. And he'd always have these flashbacks to this monk, this blind monk that used to tell him what, how to do the, the chore he had to do. He always, always used to call him grasshopper. It's great, it's a great show. Anyway, this dude walks in. And he has the bag over the shoulder like David Carradine and he, and he has a hat on like fucking Kung Fu walking the earth. And uh, for some reason, he's, he told me his name. So Chewy, Chewy, I have it written down here. Chewy Wong Man. <laughs> and for some reason he introduced himself and I didn't really give him the time of day and I presumed he was a purple belt. Right, I just presumed, I, and, and I just went on about my day. We walked in, dude was in his like, kind of late 40s, tall, skinny dude. Came in, on the mat, I was just, I didn't give him any time of day, nothing. And he showed up, and all the signs were there that I just ignored. He was wearing tights with black shorts, black rash guard. Just blanked that, ignored that. I did the warm-up, he did all the warm-up, I did the technique. I kept correcting him on the technique. All this kind of stuff. And I just presumed he was a purple belt. And I didn't, I didn't even look at what he was doing. Do you know that kind of way? I'd already made up my mind about him. And then we, we do, the tech, do the technique, do the class, and then we stick on the, the timer. Let's do some rounds. Let's roll. So I get the roll with you. And I'm rolling, and I'm presuming he's a purple belt. And at the time, I was a purple belt. And he starts kind of like fighting me for these like minute details. You know, like high level details. And we had this little battle over this fucking like tiny little detail. We went on backwards and forwards for ages and he wouldn't give up on it. And he finally swept me. And I was so pissed off that he swept me. Um, I had this thing in my head where this fucking geezer, he's out to coming in here, he's a poor papa, he's an outlet. He's out to fucking sweep me over some minute detail. Fuck this, I'm, um, I'm just getting worse. And I left the class and I started hitting the bag. <laughs> and the class was still going on, you know? Everyone was still doing the rounds, he kept rolling. I just came in here and started punching the shit out of the bag, like trying to release the fucking beast, because I was fucking biting my lip. So, <laughs> class is over, right? The round, they were run out of rounds, I didn't even do a fucking hajime or whatever, I didn't do an end of class, I was just gonna let it run till it ran. And I'm still hitting the bag, he comes in and he gets changed, he comes in and he goes, um, do I owe you? And I said, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it, man. Good luck, see ya, nice to meet you. And off he went. And then I went to bed and I couldn't sleep. I was thinking, what the fuck? I'm just fucking getting worse. Do you know what I mean? I'm just getting fucking worse. I'm at this fucking jujitsu thing for, since fucking ever, I'm going nowhere. Bums are coming in and beating me. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, who the fuck is that guy anyway? So <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning, I, I fucking just sprung out of bed, I went on the computer, I started typing in his fucking name. And <laughs> I put in his name, and not, not only is he a fucking black belt, 
He's probably our steamos fucking first ever fucking black belt. And here's all these like videos of him all over the place. He's on the Globetrotter fucking thing instructed. You have these guys rolling with him and they're, and they're describing what it was like to roll with him. And I thought, motherfucker! If why the fuck didn't he say he was a fucking, wouldn't he say who he was? Like, he could have like taught the class, he could have fucking showed us some shit. And then I just thought, why are you just making this about you, Colin? He just wanted to come in and go to a class and say nothing, and get on with his life. <laughs> and I missed it. And that, that was, the lesson there was, be aware of the signs that's right in front of you. Like the fourth sign was the, you know, he was wearing a black rash guard, black shorts, the way he moved, the details, all those things. There was three, four things that flagged, flagged, flagged. And I just had already, no, no, I've made up my mind. No, I'm done with that. He's only a poor belt. He's an elf, he's whatever. He wasn't. And it was a good lesson learned. Anytime you want to come back, Jerry, you're more than welcome. More than welcome. Learned me a good lesson that day. What else did I learn today? I learned. I, I learned. I didn't. No, I didn't. It's not that I learned it. It's just that I, I, I observed something that I do. Like today, I, it was a super moon. It's for the last few days. It's been cloudy here, and, and I'm like, ah, this is not gonna happen. I went out yesterday to kind of wreck you, fucking spawn. I was like, ah. And then today, I was like, do you know what? I'm gonna go down to the fucking Camillo Beach, down to the steps, and get the 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 rocks there as the foreground, and then this this the moon coming up. Then it was just like lo like really heavy cloud all day. Never cleared. And then I had that photo pills app to show me where the moon's coming up. And I went down, got there, no moon, no moon, no moon. The moon's up already, but there's no sign of it. It's banging behind the clouds. And the next of all, all of a sudden, it just started going to, I just see this line of light. I thought, oh, fucking yes. And it was glorious. Do you know that? It was fucking glorious. I sat there for an hour in the dark until it became light. And when that moon came through, the energy of it, you got to start seeing what's the reality of things now. Now that you're sitting and watching, now that you can, you can now that in the quiet, what's, what really is the bigger picture? Like the moon is a big thing, the seasons are a big thing, the climate is a big thing, the, the earth is a big thing, and just appreciate the fucking thing. You miss it in the noise of the way we've been going along with our flashy cars and our flashy clothes and our loud music and our fucking Beats headphones and all that shit. Just fucking listen for it. Do you hear it? great I love it so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed it I did I enjoyed making it. and I love it's not really about taking photographs it's not really about me doing a vlog a lot of these stories are they're not for you they're for me they're for me to remember because they'll change like my old man's got like dementia now and there was a transition period where he went from being a character and storyteller to stories started getting warped and distorted and all over the gaff to not remember them but I'm gonna have them so that's why I do this bit at the end it's more like to look back because as you get older they will change but sure in two generations you're gonna be forgotten so but if you stick it down and you waffle on and do a little bit because if I'm doing it with a conversation like in any podcast or conversation I've had with people, I tend to get, we get into a conversation about one little bit, I never really get the story out. So this way, I get the story done. So I hope you're enjoying them. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's all about me, isn't it? So, namaste. And I've been saying that with, with, with genuine effort as well. And, and greeting people with Hare Krishna. It's a curveball, yeah, but also it's like, I'm saying something different. It's like when people say to you, how are you today? Not too bad. When someone asks me how I'm doing, how are you doing today? Fantastic. As Joe Van would say, figure of a fantastic. It's a curveball. How do you react? Do you react like I'm a fucking weirdo? Or do you react like, hey, fuck, I don't want to buzz with that dude. All right, let's fucking buzz. Let's fucking buzz. 
Do you know what I mean? Life is short. Art is long as Brian McCarthy used to say. Still does, I'm sure. Anyway, that's it for today's vlog. Till the next one. Hashtag Rafter. We are all one. Namaste. Rafter. Oh,